Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Spurs Up Show, best Gamecocks podcast on the internet. Today is Wednesday, October the 27th, 2021. Today's show, is there more uncertainty under center for South Carolina? We start there as Zeb Nolan is now known he will have surgery. What does that mean for the Gamecocks quarterback situation as we move through the bye week and into a pivotal matchup against the Florida Gators next week? And also, guys, it is Wednesday. We're talking gambling, SEC gambling picks with a packed slate of games this weekend, guys. we got a packed show, a lot to get into here on, on your hump day, and it's all brought to you by our friends over at Upstate Movers Group. Guys, Upstate Movers Group, superior moving service. They bring care and attention other companies can't offer because they're just too busy maintaining trucks and profiting off of them instead of focusing on service. Guys, service is what separates Upstate Movers Group from the competition. They're not a trucking company. They're a moving services company, and they're also employee-owned co-op. Their movers are paid twice the industry average, and everyone on the crew is invested in your success. They have dedicated professional crew members, and they also offer black glove service. They offer end-to-end packing services, custom crating and packaging special items, and cleaning services as well. They're founded by Greenville Natives and University of South Carolina alumni guys, so a Gamecock-owned small business. They also offer 20 years of project management moving experience, and they can offer logistics and solutions solutions that traditional moving companies simply do not have the skills for. Guys, whether in the upstate or across the state of South Carolina, if you have any moving needs in 2021, be sure to check out our friends over at Upstate Movers Group. You can find them on social media at Upstate Movers Group. Of course, if you have any other questions, go to their website, upstatemoversgroup.com. That's upstatemoversgroup.com. Be sure to check them out and tell them Chris from the Spurs Up Show sent you. Let's get it. Boys and girls, happy Wednesday, happy hump day. Hope you're all doing well. I'm Chris Phillips, just the Spurs Up show as always. Appreciate you all tuning in, guys. We have got a packed show here on a Wednesday. And again, guys, thank you all so much for the continued love and support. I hope this show finds you on no matter where you are, what you're doing, whether you're on the commute, you're in the office, you're on the job, you've got the day off, maybe you're in class, whatever it may be. Again, folks, thank you all so much for the continued love and support as we navigate through this by week here in the ninth week of the 2021 football season. Guys, a lot to get into, a lot discussed. Before we do, a couple of updates, a couple of housekeeping items for you guys. First things first, we are live tonight. Although it's a bye week, we are live tonight out at Tin Roof in the Vista, 5 to 7 in downtown Columbia. Guys, would love to have you out there. Going to be a really, really good time, so be sure to check us out. If you're in the city, come on out, 5 to 7, 50 cent wings, $3 drafts. Also, if you cannot be there in person, of course, we are streaming it on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitter, Twitch as well. Going to be a really, really good time. Again, 10 roof in the Vista, downtown Columbia, 5 to 7. Also, a quick scheduling update for those who maybe were unaware. Obviously, with the bye week, normally on Thursday, we break down the game that is to come that weekend. Friday is normally our prediction show. Monday then being a recap. And Tuesday being our recap with Alex McGrath. Well, obviously, there is no game this weekend. So a quick update in case you missed it. No podcast or Daily Crow tomorrow, Friday, and then next week, Monday and Tuesday. Yours truly, of course, with it being the bye week. I know it's really a good time for us all, for this football team, but also for this fan base during the bye week to take a deep breath, maybe take a step back, reevaluate, and uh, decompress just a bit from what's been a very interesting first eight weeks of the 2021 football season. But yours truly will be going on vacation, so there will be no podcast, no Daily Crow. Again, no need to fear. Of course, there will be content all over social media. You guys know I can't stay away from it that much, but no podcast. No Daily Crow, and we will return next Wednesday when we really start breaking everything down, looking ahead of the Florida game that weekend. But again, just wanted to update you guys. No podcast, no Daily Crow tomorrow, 
Friday, and then Monday, Tuesday. So again, enjoy your time off. Enjoy the bye week. Watch some of the football. Go on vacation. Do whatever you want to do. Yours truly going to be drinking some cold ones, hanging out, having a good time, taking in some views, really relaxing and decompressing and shutting the brain off a little bit, if you will. But uh, no, just stay tuned to social media, guys. Still going to be a ton of content. Who knows with the Gamecocks. The Gamecocks news for South Carolina truly never sleeps. Also, by the way, keep this in mind when we get back next Wednesday because basketball season actually starts next week. The women having an exhibition on Monday, men exhibition on Thursday. That Wednesday show, we will return, right, in a lot of glory, right? We'll return talking Shane Beamer's presser. We will talk gambling, and it's going to be our big basketball season preview show for both the men and women. So, again, that'll be projections, predictions, everything you need to know about Gamecocks basketball going in this 2021-2022 basketball season. But, again, just so you know, just there's no surprises, no podcast, no Daily Crow tomorrow, Friday, Monday, and Tuesday. So again, enjoy your bye week accordingly. And of course, yours truly will be on social media. If you guys need anything, obviously reach out to me. We'll be continuing to post and all that good stuff, but no podcast and no Daily Crow due to the bye week for the next four or five days or so. All right. With that being said, we got a show today and we got a lot to get into. Um, Sort of a shorter show, obviously, because Shane Beamer did not have a Tuesday press. So the big piece of news coming out surrounding Gamecocks football this week, something we did not get to get into on yesterday's show with Alex McGrath because it came out so late on Monday. But it's official. Zeb Noland is to have surgery on his meniscus. Zeb Noland having surgery. I think he actually had the surgery Tuesday morning. It is a minor surgical procedure. According to USC, an official release per the University of South Carolina. Now, USC has said he is expected to be available November the 6th against Florida. Folks, let me go ahead and spoil it for you. He's not going to be available. There's absolutely no way Zeb Nolan is going to have a procedure done on his meniscus and is going to return for that Florida game. Heck, I'd be surprised really if he played the rest of this season. Now, as you already know, And you heard me say on the Monday show, and even yesterday with Alex McGrath, I think we all agree that a quarterback change was needed for this football team in regards to, you know, what's really the upside? Hey, all due respect to Zeb Nolan and all credit to him for what he's done for Gamecocks football, because without him, where would they be right now? They certainly would not be four and four. But when you take a look at the rest of this season and the upside of playing certain players, and again, I, I know it was garbage time. I know it was late in game, but you look at what Jason Brown did. His escapability, obviously Luke Doty's out for the rest of the year, but Jason Brown's escapability, his arm strength, his poise, his moxie. It looks like he has improved a ton since he stepped foot on campus. Why not give someone else a shot? Why not give someone else under center a look for a struggling Gamecocks offense? So again, guys, I know nothing is official, but I think it's unofficially official. This is the beginning of the Jason Brown era in Columbia. Again, how long will that era be? Who knows? But when you let you take a look at this Gamecocks football program and building for the future, and Jason Brown, a guy that will be back next year, there is so much more upside, in my opinion, playing a guy like him or even a guy like Colton Gothier than there is continuing to trot Zeb Nolan out there, especially behind a shoddy offensive line. And we saw what happened to him against Texas A&M. I mean, it was, it was a bloodbath for Zeb Nolan. So again, I would say, guys, I would expect, I don't think you'll hear anything this week because, again, it is the bye week. Shane Beamer, his staff are out recruiting. I don't think you're going to hear anything official drop, but I would expect in the Tuesday presser next week when Shane Beamer is asked about the quarterback position, I would expect him to name Jason Brown the starting quarterback for Saturday's game or next Saturday's game, I should say, against the Florida Gators. So, again, Zeb Nolan having that procedure, uh, all accounts, everything went well. Again, I don't think he'll be ready for the game against Florida, which I think means that Jason Brown will be your starting quarterback against Florida and really for the foreseeable future. So, again, I'd be very surprised if we saw Zeb Nolan again. And what does that mean for this offense? Can Jason Brown be that spark for this Gamecocks football team? Obviously, an offense that is reeling, that is struggling, that is looking for answers in any which way. Does this help a struggling offensive line? Who knows? Sometimes changing that one guy, sometimes changing that one guy can have an even greater impact 
than we expect. So, again, the quarterback situation, I mean, it's been crazy. We all thought just in the preseason it was going to be Luke Doty, and that's it, no drama. And sure enough, it has been the complete opposite. So, again, Zeb Nolan looking like he's going to be out with that meniscus injury. Jason Brown taking over as QB1. Going to be really, really interesting to hear what Shane Beamer's got to say about it next week and also follow this and just see – how the young man performs. And again, obviously did some nice things at the the end of that Texas A&M game. Can he carry that over? Uh, What's his confidence level like? Can he go into this game against Florida? Can he give this Gamecocks offense some sort of spark? That is the question mark, and I'm very excited to find out the answer to that question in just a short couple of weeks. So again, that is the story. That is the skinny behind South Carolina's quarterback situation Going to be fun to see how that evolves. All right, it is Wednesday, guys. No best bet, obviously, with no South on a game, so we're going to skip that and dive right into SEC Gambling Picks, which SEC Gambling Picks, guys, again, brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. Guys, if you are not playing with Prize Picks, you are missing out. We are crushing it right now on Prize Picks, continuing with our Prize Picks plays of the week. Guys, sign up for Prize Picks, prizepicks.com and or the Prize Picks app. Everyone who signs up, use the promo code TSUS. You're going to receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. Guys, what is Prize Picks, you ask? It is the simplest fantasy game on the market focused around prop total entries, all around prop plays, guys. Here's how it works you pick two to five players, and you can win up to 10 times on any entry. Guys, Prize Picks has no sharks, optimizers, or mass multi entry. It's simply just you against the projection. It also allows for mixed sports entry. So, for example, you can take the over on LeBron, parlayed with the under on Patrick Mahomes, parlayed with the over on Josh Van or Jason Brown or Kevin Harris or whoever. By the way, the thing that makes prize picks so dope, you can play prop plays on basically any other book, but here's the thing. Only prize picks has the college totals, has the college football over-unders, which makes it so much damn fun for obvious reasons. Guys, Price Picks also is a slick, easy-to-use mobile app, both in the App Store and Google Play. They're also rated 4.8 stars in the App Store with rave reviews. Again, guys, if you are not playing with Price Picks yet, over 150 of you, by the way, have signed up with Price Picks. Again, thank you all so much for the love and support there. We are having a blast with Prize Picks, though. So many of our followers, so many of our of our listeners and our fans have made a ton of money on Prize Picks, and you could be next. Again, PrizePicks.com and/or download the Prize Picks app. Use the promo code TSUS at sign up to get a one hundred percent instant deposit match up to one hundred dollars. And guys, again, not only are we making money on Prize Picks, but also our plays last week. How about this? Yours truly. Finally, we had that big week we needed. 3-0-1 last week. We are now 35-30-1 overall. So, again, a little bit of breathing room now with the overall record. 4-4 four and four in our best bet. Again, I told you guys, Aggies minus 21 was the play, and sure enough, it wasn't enough. But 35-30-1 overall, 3-0-1 last week. And we're looking to stay hot. Let's make it back-to-back weeks. Let's stay hot again. we got a great slate of games. Only four games this week. By the way, no noon kickoff. In the SEC. Got to love that. But only four games, but some really, really intriguing matchups. We're going to start with Vanderbilt taking on the Missouri Tigers. Missouri, a 16 point favorite. The overner set at 63 and a half. Here's the intriguing thing about this one, guys, because most people are going to look at this and say, oh, Mizzou minus 16. It's a no brainer. Mizzou is 0 and 7 against the spread this season. They are one of the worst in the entire country against the spread. So I'm very hesitant to take the Tigers. For that reason, I'm not going to do so under. I love the under, hammer the under, 63 and a half in this ballgame. The best pillow fight in the SEC this weekend, Vanderbilt against Mizzou. Under 63 and a half will cash in Nashville this weekend. Florida taking on the Georgia Bulldogs and the world's largest outdoor cocktail party or as it was once known as. Either way, that's what I'm going to continue to call it. Georgia, a two-touchdown favorite in this one. Dogs, minus 14. The over under set at 51 and a half. Guys, again, I told you guys this with the Georgia games. I'm not even worried about the spread. It is a big spread, but Georgia, an elite Florida. How inspired are they? Dan Mullen, obviously, I think, coaching for his job damn near at this point. The under 51 and a half, guys. The under in every Georgia game is the play this season. That defense is dominant. Under 51 and a half. I am hammering that. All day long. Let's move 
to the Plains. Auburn taking on Ole Miss. Now, this one surprises me. Auburn is a two-and-a-half-point favorite in this ballgame. The over-under set at 66-and-a-half. I understand the games in Auburn. I understand Auburn's been a much improved team to what I expected and expected them to be this season. With that being said, I don't understand this line at all. I'm taking Ole Miss plus two and a half. And guys, I'll tell you this, Ole Miss money line, I think is a fantastic pick. I think Ole Miss is so much better of a football team than Auburn is. I would not be surprised to see Ole Miss win by double digits. Give me the Rebels plus two and a half. And hey, if you're feeling frisky, take the Rebels straight up in this. I mean, heck, you're only getting two and a half, so you might as well take a money line anyways. Guys, final game. <clears throat> Mississippi State taking on the Kentucky Wildcats. Kentucky, a one and a half point favorite. The over in the state at 47. Now, this is another intriguing game, guys. Remember what I told you a couple weeks back? That when the line starts on one side and it swings across the number all the way to the other side, you either bet on the side it swung to or you don't bet at all. And that happened in this instance. Mississippi State opened, for some reason, as a two-point favorite. The line has swung all the way across the number to Kentucky favored by one and a half. So again, what does this tell you? You either bet on Kentucky minus one and a half or you leave the game alone. I am hammering. The Kentucky Wildcats, I do not understand on what planet, why Mississippi State was favored in this ballgame. I still don't understand it. Kentucky still cannot get any respect. I'm taking the Cats minus one and a half. Put some respect on the Cats name. Kentucky will get it done. Kentucky is staring an 11-1 and season right in the face, guys. Put respect on Kentucky. Again, I got UK minus one and a half. Love that pick. Cash it. Make your money. Love that pick. All right, guys, that's going to do it. That's my SEC gambling picks. Uh, that's going to do it for our Wednesday show. And, guys, that's going to do it for the next couple of days, man. We're going to be on vacation in the great state of Florida in Orlando. Going to be riding some rides, hanging out, chilling, having a good time. Folks, again, thank you all so much. And I'll say this. Thank you all so much for the love and support. Because without you guys, you know, I wouldn't be able to take a couple of days off and relax and, and go hang out and go on a vacation. And I, it's something I don't take for granted. And I, I feel so blessed and grateful that we get to wake up and do what we do and create content and put value out in the universe. And, and you guys are there each and every single day, each and every single step of the way, continuing to show support, show, show love. So again, guys, thank you all so much for the continued love and support. Very excited for next week to get into Florida week, start dissecting this thing, breaking this thing down. You know with South Carolina, guys, there's never a dull day covering the Gamecocks. So I'm sure between now and then, news will drop. We will talk about it. Stay tuned to social media. But again, no podcast, no Daily Crow tomorrow, Friday, Monday, and Tuesday. Guys, enjoy yourselves. Have yourselves a fantastic bye week. Have yourselves a great rest of your Wednesday as well. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Guys, enjoy the bye week. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much.